administration. Number three, the flood control allocations for 2018. And number four, an open letter in response to allocations of conflict of interest and in discharge of functions as budget investments of the Now on the first one, the Department of Budget and Management cannot implement the scheduled hike for 2019 without legal basis, which is still pending in Congress. This is in response to the claims from House Majority Leader Congressman Adaya that the DBM can go ahead with the implementation of the four trunks of the salary stabilization law. According to Section 11 of Executive Order Number 201, Series of 2016, the implementation of the salary schedule is subject to appropriations by Congress. Okay. That's Section 11. So its implementation is subject to appropriations by Congress. Section 15 of the same executive order in identifying the funding source for the salary adjustments provides that the DPM, quote, the DPM shall be authorized to implement or adjust the compensation corresponding to the appropriations provided in the general appropriations act. So that's very clear. So pending the passage of the 2019 general appropriations bill, government employees will continue to receive salaries based or rather indexed to the third tranche of the compensation adjustment. The implementation of the fourth tranche of compensation adjustments will be applied retroactively from January 1, 2019, once the 2019 General Provisions Bill is passed. Okay, so. Further, furthermore, Congress Joint Resolution Number 3, Series of 2018, only extends the validity of the 2018 appropriations for capital outlays and maintenance and other operating expense and expenses and does not cover personal services. So uh, the effectivity of the General Provisions Act last year was extended by Congress, but it only applies to capital outlays and maintenance and other operating expenses. This contradicts averments or statements from Congressman Andaya that the extension will allow possible funding sources for the compensation adjustments from the remaining appropriations in the 2018 budget. Finally, to dispel uh, statements from Congressman Andaya that the salary hike for the military and uniform personnel was implemented without a funding source in 2018, Geo Appropriations Act. The adjustments in the base pay schedule for the military and uniform personnel were provided for through a budget set aside in the Miscellaneous Personal Benefits Fund under personal services in the 2018 General Appropriations Act. There is a lump sum called Miscellaneous Personal Benefits Fund, and that is where we got the uh, salary adjustment for the military. Now, the second matter, infrastructure spending. Infrastructure spending surged to 6.3% of GDP in 2017 and projected to reach, because we have actual data from January to November, so we project it for December, it is projected to reach 6.2% of GDP in 2018. So that's 6.3% 2017 and that's 6.2% in 2018 almost tripling the average of 2% of GDP spent from 1986 to 2016. Okay. So we took the average from 1986 to 2016, and the infrastructure as a percent of GDP was on average about 2%. This is in line with the Duterte administration's target of increasing infrastructure spending to more than 7% of GDP by 2022. This fast track spending performance addresses the country's underinvestment in infrastructure, which has severely dragged 
the Philippine economic performance in the past. Notably, according to the latest data on government disbursements, infrastructure also remains as one of the primary spending drivers as of November 2018. Year to date, actual disbursements stand at 3.1 trillion, that's the total, increasing the likelihood of zero underspending for 2018. We will release the full report on November 2018 disbursements tomorrow. Now, with the Build, Build, Build program in full swing, infrastructure appropriations are expected to increase from 4.7% in 2019 to 7% in 2022. So far, 44 out of the 75 major projects have already begun implementation. And this year, the 356 billion Metro Manila subway project the Philippines' first ever subway system will begin construction this month, rather, this month. Now, for, for those of you who would like an in-depth comparison of the first two years of President Duterte, with the first two years of every administration, okay? That's very important. Uh, look at every administration and uh, and then look at their economic performance. Okay, so what, what do you look for? Uh, you look for growth, of course, GDP growth. Okay? And don't, don't look at, for example, President Duterte. He started July 1st, 2018, 2016, right? 2016? All right. He, you should look at this uh, 2017 first. He has nothing to do with, with uh, his first six months, because that's kind of public policy works with a lot, right? We don't we didn't prepare the 2016 budget, so we have nothing to do with that. So 2017 is his first year, and 2018 is his second year. So you look at every administration like that, and you'll find out that he has done very well. Okay, we hit the ground running because every administration would have maybe. Uh, one or two years to adjust, okay, to hire new people, etc. And so you look at the performance, growth is number one. Number two is uh, inflation, okay. We look at the data, and, and I'm sure Secretary Bernier will give you this. He presented also a comparison of inflation in the cabinet. And uh, as far as I know, as far as I remember, inflation peaked up 10% during GMA's term. Uh, around 10% during Arabs, first two years. Of course, much higher under Ramos, but around 16% inflation. And then under Cody, around 20%. Okay? Pinoy's inflation was much lower, and that is because of the global recession. If you remember, there was a global recession for almost 10 years, and so uh, interest rates were high, the price of oil was down, etc. So that's number one. Number one is growth, number two is inflation. The third one, of course, which is very important, is infrastructure spending, and that will be shown. Do we have a graph for that? Okay, good for distribution also. You'll see that the infrastructure spending as a percent of GDP was around 2%, less than 2% in fact. In, under GMA, for example, is 1.6%, okay? And then under, under President Duterte, it was more than 6%. So that shows how, how that we hit the ground running. Our first two years were really spectacular compared to the previous two years, first two years of the previous administration. So if you want to write a, an in-depth analysis of the economic performance, that's one way of doing it. Growth, inflation, infrastructure spending, and of course, employment. Look at the level of unemployment. You can also do that. I'm, I'm sure you know where to get those numbers, right? Unemployment, first two years of every administration. If you want to make a comparison. Now, the, the third item is on flood control allocations. Now, allow me to discuss the allocations for the flood control projects of 2018. According to the figures of the DPWH, 
and DBM, the province of Albay had the largest allocation under the Flood Mitigation Structures and Drainage Systems Program of the PWH in 2018 with 4 billion allocation. Bulacan ranked second with 3.65 billion, so I'll buy first 4.03, Bulacan second with 3.65 billion, and Tarlac with 3.39 billion in third place. Sorsogon ranked seventh with an allocation of 2.67 billion following the provinces of Cavite, of Banga, and Cebu. So it's uh, it's Albay first, Bulacan second, Talak third, Cavite fourth, Pampanga fifth, uh, and Cebu uh, sixth, Sosodon seventh. For the flood facilities, flood mitigation facilities within major and principal rivers program of 2018, the province of Pangasinan had the largest allocation with 2.14 billion. Bulacan had the second largest with 1.5 billion, and Webay Siha ranked third with 1.19 billion. So it's Pampang, uh, Pangasinan, then Bulacan, then Webay Siha. So Sogor had a much lower, smaller allocation of 377 million, making it the 22nd province in terms of allocation. 22nd. This allocation served to bolster the resources of the Department of Public Works and Highways to curb the impact of stronger typhoons on the country brought about by climate change. So on average, uh, flood control would, would account for about 15% of the DPWH country. Lastly, I have written an open letter to Bobby Tiglau, you know him, Tiglau, Tiglau, who has written a commentary in the Manila Times regarding recent state of affairs. And uh, what's the background here? On Saturday, last Saturday, I received an email from him asking me to write something about matters not yet discussed on the Andai allegation. Saturday, you know. And then, sabi niya, sabi ka, I will. And then, so, I sent a lot email saying, but I have a deadline. The deadline is that I think Monday 12 o'clock. Yung pala Sunday 12 o'clock. There's no way I can write anything because I, on Saturday, I had a meeting with some media people, friends, right? Including somebody who's here. So we had a meeting, breakfast meeting. And then on, on Saturday evening, I had a speaking engagement. So there was no way I could write that. So I but I thought the deadline was Monday, 12 o'clock. So that, well, to, to my surprise, not on Saturday on Monday morning. So, so uh, he's, he's a friend of mine since way back in the early 80s, before before Ed won. And so uh, I think uh, I think he will publish what I have written, and you have a copy of that. Okay, I'll give you a copy. In that letter, I, I said that it's false. The, the allegation that I have facilitated the awarding of government projects to off paper contractor. I do not, in my position, and I've said this many times, I do not deal with contractors. I, I deal with government agencies, the, the heads of the agencies, not the contractors. The implementation of projects are done by the agencies, not the DBM. So I don't uh, deal with them. And besides, the choice of contractors is, is by law governed by uh, the Public Procurement Reform Law, Government Procurement Reform Act. Huh? So it's an open, competitive bidding all the time. Okay. Second, I have not manipulated a budget to ensure the inclusion of projects in favored districts, particularly flood control structures under the Department of Public Works and Highways. The DPM is only charged with setting the aggregate ceiling. So we just set the, the aggregate ceiling if it's 3.7 trillion, and then we set the individual budget ceilings of departments and agencies. What happens within, or what is contained within that budget, 
is the is the concern the light differences, uh, spa, spatial allocation by by region, by district, by province, etc. And the kind of projects they want to do that's their concern, not mine. And so also we are involved in the release of spending authority, which under the new budget system, which I have initiated, is practically ministerial. As soon as the Chief General Appropriations Act is, is signed into law, around 75 to 80 percent of that is automatically released. Okay? I have nothing to do with micromanaging or how much to release this agency. It's automatically released. Only the lump sums like uh, calamity fund, contingent fund, that's we take care of that on a uh, per request basis. But the rest of the budget is already released. So the details can be found in the open letter that will be distributed to you. Okay. So thank you and I'm open to your questions. Uh, because of the situation in Manila, I'll be here the whole day until 3 o'clock and I have to go to Malacanya to, to uh, attend the meeting. So if you have any questions after this, I will be just around. Okay. Yes. Uh, the same MPDF was also uh, mentioned by uh, Senator Drillon yesterday saying that that to finance or fund the uh, salary increases for 2018, is that possible? It, uh, the, 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 the miscellaneous personal benefits fund in 2018 can only cover the salary adjustments in 2018. So the additional transfer requirements cannot be covered by, by that. Right? So, so uh, plus, really, the, the law is very clear. The executive board is very clear. We need the general appropriations uh, act to be approved. Okay? This is better than what is happening now in the U.S. By the way, right? In the U.S., there is no automatic reenactment provision, so they have to close practically all of their agencies because there is no there is a shutdown, but only partial shutdown. The military and the state departments, they continue to operate, okay? But the rest of the bureaucracy in the U.S. is right now on shutdown. So 800,000 federal workers are on forced leave, leave without pay, okay? But, so this is, the reenactment provision in the Constitution is meant to avoid such a situation, right? So, uh, but no government no administration should settle for a reenactment, reenacted deal or law for the rest of the year. If they, the if the administration should always look for a new budget bill. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, to restrict the program for interest spending to GDP for 2018 is 6.3, but the slightly distinct, um, but you know, no, it's 6.2, but. Uh, for 2019, it's going to be 6.8 even higher. What are the chances that you hit it, given that you're operating on the reenacted budget early this year? Well, as soon as, as, long as the Senate and the House acts on the budget, uh, then we'll, we'll probably get it. Okay? Plus, given that remember that the 2018 budget was extended, there are some appropriations which have been released before, but have yet to be obligated. So that will also help, okay? And, and depending also on, on the speed by which we, we contract some of our foreign loans, then I'm, I'm optimistic that uh, we'll get the target next for this year. And in fact, I was uh, quoted as saying yesterday in a, in a talk show that we're confident this time that we will hit 7% at least. Our target is 7 to 8% growth rate. And we're confident we'll get that. Any other questions? <coughs> and inflation will be much, much lower next year. Our target date is, our target is two to four. But as you know, because of the pace effects, right? We're coming from a very high inflation. We'll probably end up 
closer to two than to four. Okay? Especially since we anticipate oil, world crude prices to continue to, to soften. And this year, this year, this year. Uh, your expert, your confident version 7% this year, but. Um, are there, for example, I have to assume a reactive um, budget for at least the first uh, three months of the year, but uh, is there any like debt to the GDP? That's how you Well, uh, I, there's a one analyst who says that we will not hit our deficit to GDP ratio next year. We will be slightly hit. 2.9 rather than 3. That's to me. That's uh, uh, that's useless debate. 2.9, 3, 3.1. It's too early to say whether we'll hit 3. But we're working around 3 percent. Okay. This is not an exact science. So, uh, but as long as our trajectory is 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 set, that's 3 percent. It could be 2.9 this year. 3% next year, as long as it evens out to 3, that's fine. Since the fourth tranche will be the last, and then there are requests for salary hikes by teachers and some other sectors, what will, be, uh, the, uh, what will the DBM do in the next few months? Actually, I have already organized a task force to study. We are going to hire a third party to study with structure. Okay. Right now, at this time, for the 2020 to 2022 salary adjustment. Yeah. So 2019 is already covered. So what we're doing right now is what will be the salary structure of the private sector. We will compare our salary structure. And that so that study is ongoing right now. So there's a possibility of another uh, there will there will be not a possibility okay. there will be but how much is is not yet determined. This will be uh, across all the uh, government. Uh, well, if it's government and military. Okay. Uh, good morning, Secretary. Uh, sir, you repeated uh, Secretary Togades' uh, statement earlier that the construction for the Metro Manila subway will start this month. Uh, do we already have a specific date, sir? Because it's already January 9 and it's supposed to be to start by mid-January. In fact, that was supposed to be there was supposed to be a groundbreaking last December 19. So uh, I I don't have the date yet, but maybe around the third week of January. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I have not talked to Togade, he was sick during the pandemic. So, but uh, I think it's more or less like the third week of January. Okay, sir. And also, sir, on the consortium which will um, uh, do the construction for the subway, do you have any information if it will employ local Filipinos or if everything will come from Japan? You know, our arrangements with the, our uh, development partners like China or Japan is that they will identify their three best contractors okay, per project. So if it's a bridge, there are three best bridge contractors. Right? That's China. So we expect that one of the three contra Japanese contractors will win a bid. It could be a consortium. But as you know, the Japanese do not have a lot of people, right? They're aging, so they don't have the manpower to do this. So I'm sure that most of the workers will be Filipinos. Okay? Sir, I understand that you briefed the president about the delay in the budget passage during the cabinet meeting. No, but even before the cabinet meeting, that was during our Christmas, before our Christmas party last December. I brief him on the development because of that time we will actually we will actually determine to call for a special session. But there was a request from the Senate that they really are already tired because they've been conducting hearings until two o'clock in the morning, and so it's not possible. So I that's one of my my the subject matters we talk about. Sabi ko pagbigyan ng natin is pagod na pagod na talaga sila. So we decided not to call for a special session. 
so what, what was his latest, most recent marching order regarding the budget? Well, last cabinet meeting, I briefed him on what a reenacted budget would look like and that there's really an urgent need for the Senate and the House to come together and approve the budget. And in fact, uh, their, their timetable really, at least from the Senate's point of view, is that they will resume session on Monday, that's January 14, and they're optimistic that they will be able to approve the budget before the end of the month. Okay? But I said, uh, Mr. President, after they have come to an agreement, and of course, after they, they will, they will have to form a third chamber, what's called the conference committee, or what I usually call the uh, third chamber. Okay, and it could be a full-blown third chamber, or it could be a four eyes only. Okay, now after they have ratified both houses, they will send the budget, the envelope copy to the president. By that time, you, you, the president cannot sign it yet. It will have to go through a review by DBM and the Office of the President. We will go through it line by line. Okay, that's the, that's the process, okay? line by line. So that thick document, we will have to compare what we sent to Congress and what came out of Congress, line by line. And then uh, we'll have to make a judgment of whether the president will exercise what is called light item veto power. Okay? Light item veto power. He can, uh, the president can actually cross out items that he doesn't agree with and then sign the budget. And that's good as sign, right? The U.S. president does not have that power. The U.S. president, when confronted with a bill like that, either signs it or veto it. Okay? He does not have line item veto power. And by the way, that also applies to tax measures, okay? We have used that line item veto power, okay? Uh, I remember President Clinton wanted that power, line item veto power, and he, he actually sponsored, oh, well, he asked his colleagues in, this, in the in Congress to pass a law. And the law was passed, giving him veto power. But that was challenged in the Federal Supreme Court. And the court ruled that no, that cannot be enough you know, because it will change the balance of power. Okay, the balance. So the president is very powerful. He can actually, if he doesn't like an item that was inserted or a, a, an amendment to the to his proposal, which he does not like, he cannot repeat. Okay. Sir, what was of course. Um, some of the congressmen are not exactly your best friends right now. So do, don't you see this complicating? the bike um, because oh, some of them will sit there, right? So, hindi po ba magkapos yun ang further delays? What, what, uh, why would it complicate? But it, is, it is their job to pass the, 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 the bill, right? It is, their, it is their job. They can sit on it if they want to, but then uh, that will prolong the uh, re-enacted re part of the bill. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, just for for your information, during the time of GMA, on three years, uh, I don't have the numbers now, in the years, on three years, the budget was on a reenacted status for food for the whole year, three years. And then for four years, it was reenacted much, much later. Parts of reenactment are about three to four months. Okay? So that was all during the time of GMA. And he, she's House Speaker now. She was okay with that system when she, she was president. So don't you think she would be okay with that happening this year, throughout the year? But there was an intervening event. Remember the PTAF and the TAF? Uh, there was now a, a ruling which says you cannot... <clears throat> because during that time they were like, like they were rewriting the whole budget. like. Okay, so they enacted UPS, they enacted your maintenance under free expenses. So we all that we enacted it to the CEO, right? So that's that's like an open open uh, book. So they they rewrite it, they they approve projects which are not in the original budget. That's no longer allowed given the PDAF and the uh, actually it's not allowed even before, but now it's, it has become clear you cannot do that. Okay, so we are strictly 
uh, abiding by the constitutional provision that if it's not in the bill, if it's not in the law, in the general provisions, like you cannot spend it. So our interpretation right now is only the PS and the MOE and the continuing appropriations of continuing projects that will be enacted. Okay. So by the second quarter, we'll have a new budget. That's our hope, yes. Right. Sir, sir, sorry, just follow up, sir. Sir, since I haven't seen the line-to-line the -line comparison, sir, um, which social services would be most impacted, sir, if uh, the budget is uh, reenacted? I mean... No, our, our reenacted budget is that you go back to the 2018, Right when we, we told them, look, you can spend. I told you we already gave a, an issue on this. We issued a circular saying, okay, all departments you can you can spend 25 percent of your 2018 budget for PS, MOE 25 percent, and then uh, for some continuing capital outlays you can you can do that. So. Uh, so if you want to find out what's happening right now, you go back to the 2018 budget. Okay, 2018. So there are some there are some uh, expenditures which we cannot give at this time because it's in the 2019 budget, but not in the 2018 budget. For example, I think the Pantawid, uh, the uh, there is a there is a grant under the uh, Green Law for the lowest half of the population, right? Right now, their uh, allocation is 200 per month. So that's, is it? It's 2,400 per, per year, okay? Now, for this year, it's supposed to be 3,600. So we will continue the 2,400. In the meantime, that there's no law yet, but as soon as the, the, the budget is approved, the 2019 budget is approved, we will keep the, Difference, okay. So things like that, or also the uh, the contribution to the health uh, field health. I think the the uh, the new rate now in the under the 2019 budget is 5,000 per individual. Now, uh, but right, no, no, it's the the contribution will be 5,000 per individual in the 2019 budget. But right now it's somewhere in the neighborhood of three thousand. So that differential will be will be uh, released after the budget. Question. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Mike. Sorry. <laughs> Question. What's the what are the implications or consequences? if the cash-based budgeting system isn't implemented this year, but it was supposed to be implemented this year. It is still going to be implemented this year. There's no change, okay? Actually, uh, we, we, under existing laws, we can implement cash budgeting anytime. The, the, we really want that budget reform bill passed to make sure that after we leave the scene, I mean after the term we leave the scene, <laughs> The next administration will not go back to obligation budgeting. Okay? So we can implement it right now in 2019. There's no, there's no law against that. Okay? So we just want to institutionalize. And as you know, the uh, old system is slow. It is hard to track. And it, it, uh, it's very complicated. Uh, imagine tracking three laws. Uh, three general appropriations at any one time. So we, and it's it is really uh, uh, not practice in the developed countries. Okay? Three fourths of OECD countries, that's the more developed countries, are into cash budgeting. The private sector are into cash budgeting. Can you imagine our system, two year obligation, where if a budget is approved now this year, you have until December of next year to find a contractor December of next year. And then, the construction will take place on year three, okay? So that's year three. And then we'll probably get paid if you're the contractor on year four. 
that kind of system is not very conducive to uh, to faster or quicker delivery of public services. Okay? And it's also a disincentive for good contractors to deal with the government. If you are a good, if, if you are a good contractor and you have other uh, opportunities to give to the private sector, why, why, why do business with the government? So that tax budgeting system is, will solve a lot of problems okay, to weaken the delivery of public services. <laughs> Sir, I'm just wondering, does the president, this is uh, regarding the salary increase, does the president have any special authority or power that would perhaps allow him to realign funds or have other sources of funding to grant uh, the fourth branch? No, no. The, the executive order, uh, as I mentioned, executive order in 2016 explicitly provides that you need a general appropriation staff. Okay. Plus, the amount involved does not allow such flexibility. Also, okay. and we don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, committing errors that will be. The first best solution really is to get that budget passed. Okay. Sir, in, um, on Monday's cabinet meeting, did you have? to uh, talk to the president about the allegations of, of Congressman Andaya regarding your, your, your supposed in-laws, your thing, thing. Uh, We had that conversation much earlier, uh, last December. Okay? Wala naman siya. Uh, si, alam mo, wala talaga kami kinalaman sa mga choice na sa implementation and choice of contractors. Okay? Wala talaga kinalaman ng DBN. Uh, and I don't, I don't know the guy, Leo Cho, whoever it is, or she, but I turned out that she's a she, not he. And he, she, in fact, said in the hearing in Naga that he doesn't know me. Okay? And be that as it may, wala talaga kami kinalaman sa We do not choose contractors to be Sir, yung sa RMR construction, you also talked to the president about that? Because uh, the congressman is... Uh, saying that basically RMR is using all these dummy um, companies? Uh, we, didn't, we didn't talk about that because he, he has trust and confidence in you. There's no point uh, using up his valuable time talking about this. Last lang, sir. Sorry. Um, just assessing the situation, I'm just wondering, as far as you're concerned, do lawmakers have anything to uh, benefit from prolonging the passage of the 2019 GAA? Why do you think are they doing this? So in fact, it will, it will deny them essential projects that need to be implemented during the election period. Right? So uh, it will not benefit them after that. Especially now that we have uh, to be made it very clear that we will not release the road users fund. Okay? Mm. And that's, uh, that has been the uh, source of their maybe campaign fund in the past. Okay. Now it's in their in it's in their well I think I think you know they should just use their time because it, the, the session days of this Congress is very limited. So why don't they just use their time approving for example a very important bill like Freedom of Information Bill which has been languishing for so long, right? Why don't they approve the bank secrecy law which will actually uh, uh, I'm sure we will we'll increase our rating a little bit. Okay? These are very essential. Okay? These are path-breaking legislation. Freedom of information law and uh, the uh, bank secrecy law. Okay? Very important. Okay? Why are they wasting their time? They don't have enough time. They will, they will convene, then they will go and recess again for the election. And then the next time they will continue will be they will, that will be a lame duck congress, okay? Uh, another week before before June 13th. Okay. Uh, so, um, good morning, uh, Bruce from uh, ABS CBN. Sir, I just uh, like to ask, uh, can, can we go back now to the infra spending? Uh, despite all these issues, how are you seeing uh, key infra spending, key infra projects really progressing this year? 
are we still set to meet some targets? Uh, especially as you mentioned earlier, um, uh, the Mega Manila subway is about to start construction this month. Yeah, I think in the in the uh, press release there will be a listing of the projects that are there. Okay, that, that's only partial. Okay, I'm I'm very confident that we are going to go full blast. We we already did, as I said, we did much much better than the previous every administration. Okay, every administration post war. Okay, post war, not post war, post. Marcos administration, Aquino, Ramos, Era, um, GMA, Pinoy. Okay. And we'll do even better next, this year, rather. And so, uh, you know, unfortunately, when we took over, there were not a lot of feasibility studies. Okay. So, but we can assure the next government that there will be a lot of feasibility studies. In fact, we we had a loan with ADB precisely to finance all this feasibility study so that whoever will be the next president, uh, named as a faceless at this time, will have a lot of feasibility studies ready for implementation. Okay? Kasi yun, yun ang nakakatagal dyan eh, yun, when we don't have that kind of uh, preliminary studies. So, uh, I'm sure tapos na yung mga feasibility studies namin. In fact, uh, we have just awarded the contract for the TNR, the long road. That's uh, the, the 600 plus kilometers of road going all the way to Matlas or Sobron. We have already awarded the subway contract. So, uh, so many of these are, are, are going full last next, uh, this year right now. Oh, sir, sorry. With that, sir, how confident are you that we can hit yung our the, the, uh, the economic targets that we've set uh, around uh, at two seven point nine percent? Is that still uh, attainable uh, given um, the issues or given you, the? You mentioned right. I didn't say that. Exactly. Seven to eight, no? Yes, yes. Seven to eight. I'm confident that we'll hit at least seven. Okay, next, next year. Uh, this year, rather. This year. You you know why? Uh, because the when. Not many people know this, even some businessmen. Kala nila, uh, nominal yung growth, growth rate. It's, it's not nominal, it's real, okay? So when you say seven, that takes care already of inflation. Ayan, di ba sabi ni, ni Perna, sana kung hindi mataas yung inflation, mataas ang, ang growth target namin. Kasi uh, it's, it's nominal growth rate minus the rate of inflation. That's the real inflation. Since we are expecting lower inflation next year, then mas madaling mag-hit yung real growth rate of 7%. This year? Or? This year, this year. Right? I keep saying that, all right. Uh, I'm still maybe operating on the last year. This year. Okay? So that's, I uh, know, uh, that's... If we hit around uh, two, three percent, that that is very good. possible and doable. Uh, Seven percent. Okay. And just uh, one quick question, sir. Uh, earlier, it was also been reported that in approved name higher uh, uh, taxes for alcohol and and uh, and alcohol and tobacco. So can you explain this now? When when did Mr. Duterte approve this and how? Uh, from the collections from this, how are we expected to spend this or allocate this? Now, let me, let, let me make that clear. It is Congress who approves the law, the new tax bill. So, uh, the, House, the House passed a bill increasing the tax on cigarettes and liquor, but it was uh, not as high as what we wanted. Our original proposal was close to what Manny Pacquiao in the Senate is, is, uh, is, is would like to pass. No? So napasa na yan sa House. Now what we are urging is for the Senate to pass a similar bill, which is the Pacquiao bill, na mas mataas, so that when they go into conference, because they have disagreed provisions again, ma-adapt yung Senate version. So, so the subject of the meeting last Monday was to for the president to 
write Congress that this is his priority and it's an urgent bill and that he wants it passed. Okay? And that is also in connection with the universal health care. Okay? So uh, hopefully with the passage of the much higher tax on cigarettes and liquor that the funding requirement of the universal health bill will be met. Okay, that's the nature of it. It's not yet passed, but it is now being uh, considered as an urgent measure by the president, and he's going to write a letter to Congress. Sir, yes. regarding GDP, your target is 7 to 8. Sir, aside from the reenacted budget, could you cite other uh, maybe threats to, to this growth target for this year? For this year, for this year, yes. Uh, <laughs> as you know, I. Uh, I already mentioned this. Uh, agriculture has not been doing well. Okay, sana ko ng agriculture na kung grow yan ay around three percent. Then mas matas talaga yung GDP natin. The agriculture sector has been a major drag in our economic performance. Okay, uh, I remember during the time of era, agriculture grew by six point five percent. Can you imagine that? 6.5%. Hindi naman namin yun expect yun. But we just can, can only grow at 2 rather than right now, which is, I think, 0 0.4. Then it will be uh, a major contributor to growth. And so that, and the president's aware of this. The president's aware of this. So in fact, he, during our cabinet meeting, and this is the second time he said that, he told Pino you know, that uh, the agricultural sector is dragging the okay. he mentioned that earlier during our December meeting and this is the second time that he mentioned that. Okay. Uh, the price of uh, crude the world uh, crude oil prices will continue to be soft this year, I think. And if there is a slowdown in the global economy that will even Add to the softening of pork crude prices. Remember, it hit almost $18 or fucking $50 at one point no? in September. Now it's the below $60, in fact, it's below $50 per barrel. The relevant thing, the, the relevant price for us is not Brent. Brent is the, the sweet oil. What is relevant for us is the Dubai food, which is the sour. It's just cheaper than, than Brent. Okay. So it's it's uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of fifty dollars, I think. So that's a big, big decline from from the previous high of around seventies to eighty. And there's already an assurance that this administration will no longer repeat the bloopers that you had last year regarding the oil when you announced well, announced that you will no longer implement the second tranche of increase then for the fuel in excise tax and then denial will later on. Well, uh, we actually we were inclined to recommend, we in fact we recommended already. That was during the peak of the oil price, right? crude, crude, global oil price. Right? I think that was sometime in September. Or we were in Bali, Indonesia at the time, during the World Bank IMF meeting. And so we talked about ourselves and said, well, this is part of our uh, anti-inflation. Not sure. So, but you know, things turn around happily, and so it went down, and so we changed our our recommendation, which was adopted by the president. So starting now, you know, what one of the little NASA not that would be the trigger number uh, is five. Correct, correct. Yeah, it's it's two fifty two and one fifty, right? Okay. Our original proposal, if you remember, is one times six pesos <coughs> per. Excise tax, and then there was a compromise. It's a, over three years, 250 in year one, two past year two, 150 in year. So no, no, no more changes. Yes, uh, just wondering how uh, the infrastructure spending to GDP was computed uh, in 2017. You said it was 6.3, but checking on past uh, releases, uh, you said it was 5.6. It's a big jump from. from 
Uh, I was surprised myself when, uh, but uh, could, could you explain that, uh, Adrian? Those are disbursement figures, and that's a cash concept. The infra outlays, as you can note in the graph, is based on actual obligations. That's in table B3 of the BASF. All right, this is my, uh, my Mr. Google, okay? <laughs> Then our, you know, our original assumption was around 60 to 65, I think, right? So, no, we're, we're not going to adjust yet. Uh, we'll, we'll see the developments, but... Uh, so we keep it. We keep the assumption constant. Too too early to make adjustments, but we do make adjustments based on based on recent developments. It's, uh, this is not rocket science. Okay? It's not exact science. We make adjustments on, on the basis of new information. All right. SSL four was an EO, but for the next uh, increases in twenty twenty to twenty. Do you propose a bill or another EO? We are still thinking about that, whether it's an EO or a bill. Okay? I'm, I'm, yeah, sure. So we're looking at the enacted budget, uh, and since you do comparison with President Trump, um, because President Trump said he can just declare a state of national emergency if he wants a budget for the wall. Hindi pa pwedeng gawin rin yung sunyip ni President Duterte given na parang nasa state of lawlessness pa rin naman niya ng mga SRD. On the bad credibility ni Mr. Trump. Okay. Uh, I don't think we have to do that. Okay. Uh, there is a law which they don't have and so we don't have to resort to this uh, measures. So we just follow the constitutional provision that we operate under a reenacted budget. Sir, you said that you see no pain from the lawmakers delaying the budget. Um, what do you make, sir, in uh, these past few weeks there have been serious statements against you from Representative and I? What do you make out of this? Uh, I, I really don't uh, think about it. Uh, this is uh, requires speculation. I don't know what he's, what he's coming from. I think we just do our job. I have a lot of things to do. He has a lot of things to do. Let's do our job. It requires speculation, so I don't... I, you ask him what, what he has against me. Right? Where do you see it? How do you see this being a soul? I mean, there are many threats that he will even sue you. And then no, he said he will sue me if I don't adjust the pay by the January 15th. I said, uh, then sue me, sue me with super courts. Go to the super court, sue me. But that is the law. So if I implement it the way he wanted it, ako naman makakaroon ng kaso, hindi ba? Because it's, there's really no legal basis for adjusting the pay, okay? uh, which, which is in my first thing. You cannot force me to do something which is unconstitutional. Okay? Are you meeting leaders on the Is that about the budget? No, it's about, uh, I think, funding for Manila flood control. Okay. Uh, so it's meeting with, with me and uh, who else? The MMDA and the Okay. Have you and your intelligence staff already crunched the numbers on how much the reenacted budget will impact on growth the first quarter because you've given the full year. So uh, uh, we have already given that, right? Uh, so you just divide it by four. So <laughs> except except the, 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 the important thing is the best time to, to build is during the first six months of the year, right? But depending on the weather pattern, because now with the climate change, you don't know what the weather is going to be in the first six months of the year. But historically, the best time to build is during the first six months of the year, January to June. Okay? So if we miss that, then we can make up if we don't have major typhoons. But you don't have to make up. 
but some some major projects we really are not that susceptible to to uh, the weather, especially kung ito sa north, medyo serious weather tayo. Uh, parang yung luso nata hindi masaya kung natamaan ng bato this that side that side. So may, may, oh, our major constructions are actually in the in region three. Uh, the region of Clark, train going to Clark, and from train from Manila to Laguna, you know, the major construction, the subway. So, because di ba ang full year projection yung sa impact is at least for 2.3 percent, di ba? Yeah, 200 around 220 billion at the if I remember right. Spent it will be like uh, sterilized first. Okay. For if it's full year, so you just divide it. That's a rough estimate. I have released that last last time. Uh, and sir, it's by essentially reality na siya kasi hindi mo na siya mababasa ng dun sa first quarter. Eh. So mama minus. No, no, but you can. Meron meron tino tao na cuts up lang. There's always a cuts up. Lang. Instead of working maybe eight hours, you can work sixteen hours. Like that, two shifts rather than one shift. Okay. So you're saying, sir, na yung mawawala sa growth natin this quarter, pwede natin siyang mabawi to sa mga susunod na quarters. <coughs> when you construct a building, sometimes you lag behind, and then you have a cut plan. What are your cut plan? You work longer hours. We employ more people, etc. You know what I'm saying? All right. Uh, no more questions. Uh, as I said, I'll just be around if you want more.